fight. Mauricio fighter. Herrera, 35 years old. El Maestro, the teacher, is his nickname against undefeated Frankie Gomez, who is 20 and 0. And Frankie Gomez, a fighter who was highly touted as an amateur, a bidding war back and forth between promoters who was going to. First fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. He weighed in officially 146 pounds, and as a professional, stands perfect with 20 victories, no defeats, 13 wins by way of knockout. Finding out of him representing East Los Angeles, California. Here is the undefeated, breaking Pitbull Gomez. And next is opponent across the ring, finding out of the red corner. Wearing blue, trimmed in red, he weighed in 145 and one half pounds. In 27 professional bouts, his record, 22 victories. Five defeats with seven knockouts to his credit. Fighting out of Riverside, California, he is the former WBA light welterweight champion of the world, El Maestro Mauricio. All right, gentlemen, this fight's scheduled for 10 rounds. We received your instructions in the dressing room. Again, I want to caution you. Knee punch below this area is going to be called low. Gope de bajo de este punto serio mal bajo. That stated, I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Obedezco mis comandos y protegerte a su mismo siempre. Touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. Token loss. One for a count. Ready to go. Ten rounds in the welterweight division. That's Mauricio Herrera, el maestrito, the teacher. The nickname given to him by his father after his fourth or fifth professional fight. He said his dad told him, here and there just schooling people. El maestro is his name. He started to turn pro at the age of 27. I you from... Lake Elsinore going now living in Riverside. He's wearing the blue trunk with the red trim. For Frankie Gomez wearing the green, white, and red. Mauricio Herrera, 22 and 5, 7 KOs. Frankie Gomez, 20 and 0, 13 KOs. Different starts to their careers. But Frankie Gomez was that blue chip prospect coming up. Bought along very nicely. Love shows that were on TV. Vegas fights, Break. everything that you would Break. expect from a guy who was a my man, an guys. amateur. Who, there was a pity war over his services. On the opposite side, Mauricio Herrera fighting in club shows. Sometimes wondering if the check was going to clear. Sometimes wondering if his opponent was going to show up. Definitely not fighting on TV, not the public eye. The way not at all. This was. But I'm glad you mentioned that he turned pro at age 27 because at age 35, he's not one of these burnt out veterans. He's still fresh. <laughs> Last time Herrera was in the ring, win against Hank Lundy at the sports arena, a fight that was stopped because of headbutts. Because of that went five rounds. Frankie Gomez, his last time he was in the ring, he went the distance against the Siberio Ford P, a tough Mexican journeyman. Just like our last fight, this is a, a fight where Golden Boy's kind of rolling the dice a little bit with their young undefeated prospect. Herrera is a dangerous guy in a different sense than Curtis Stevens. Stevens is dangerous because of his experience and his power. Herrera is dangerous because of his experience and his technique and his ring generalship. That's how he overwhelms a young guy. He just shuts him down with his ring generalship. Yeah, Lennox for uh, Gomez, a lot of critiques about him. Last summer, he was supposed to fight Humberto Soto. He came in six pounds overweight. An HBO co him up, feature him up. that was canceled because there's no way he was able to lose that weight. So our prospect who's had trouble making weight, that knack on him. Work out, and work out. You, know, you hear the name, Lennox, and he's like, I can't know what he's going to do. When's he actually ever going to take it to the next level? I think a lot of people are expecting that from him. Well, you know, it, it really just takes fight after fight. And, you know, in this fight, he looks a bit nervous. He's not warmed up like he should be. You can tell his body uh, uh, energies right now. It's not, he's, he's basically just Break. watching and taking Break. his time. He's not really doing that much. He needs to get it started. He hasn't got it started yet. What makes you say that, Lennox? 
Well, I don't see him really throwing the jab because I like Come guys on, that out, throw jabs out. and start things what off with jabs. He's really just looking for that pop shot right now. How about Frankie Gomez in the green, white, and red? Ten seconds to go on the OP round, scheduled for ten. Herrera Gomez on the undercard of Canelo and Khan in Las Vegas. Second round, scheduled for ten. Crowd filling in nicely. We're watching Mauricio Herrera in the blue against Frankie Gomez in the green, white, and red. Gomez's style is sort of to, to pot shot with powerful punches. When he's at his best, he's put together combinations of odd punches angles, up. moving in punch and out moving out. But he's one of those fighters who gets off in spots, gets off in these, these dynamic bursts. And then there's some lulls in the action. So there's an opportunity for Mauricio Herrera to be the more consistent fighter, offensively speaking. Work his jab for three minutes of the round, basically outwork Gomez round after round. Yeah, they're still getting used to each other's style. You know, it's still the second, second round right now, and they're still getting warmed up. Both of them came in, none of them were sweaty. So the warm up is very, very important. The fight before them ended in a second round KO by Curtis Stevens over Pactor Teixeira. They came in a little sooner than they probably expected. Mauricio Herrera. For this fight, he thought he was going to take on Lucas Matisse, the Argentinian fighter. But Matisse, still not 100% healed in that play he suffered in his last fight. Instead, they made the deal with Frankie Gomez. And they're going to come in with the A-side fighter. Unorthodox style, so it's gonna, there's going to be an adjustment period here as, as they sort of figure out each other's rhythm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and they both spoke about that coming into the fight. Now they won't really get started until they sort of figure out the sort of uh, unorthodox rhythm of the other. A lot of respect between these two leading up to this fight. Loretta has fought the bigger names on her ledger. Great battle with Luis Lombardi in 2011. Here's Andy Garcia in Puerto Rico. Juan Perez, Ray Benavides. When you look over Frankie Gomez, he's brought along. He's got prospect. Vernon Perez, the fight stands out. Is there something underneath the left eye of Mauricio Herrera? Yeah, he is cut underneath the left eye. Cuts are, have, have plagued his career. That, that's what happened in his last fight against Henrik Lundy. This is early in the fight for him to be showing that, that oh. kind of like mark. Exactly. Do a punch. Do a punch. Go. He's saying Let's it's go. A punch. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. Go. Time in. It's under the eye, so it's, it's not going to get in the way of uh, his, his sight, but. Uh, you know, it starts to swell up, that's something. He's getting hit more by Gomez. Yeah, usually when I see somebody get hurt like that, especially when I'm boxing them, it really rears me on. Cut! Cut! Go! Two. A little flare at the end. Crowd on his feet, feeling pretty good. They got closed throughout the fight. Cut man for Ma Mauricio Herrera is his father, Mauricio Sr. Okay, by Jose Torres. In the blue and red, Frankie Gomez in the green, white, and red. And Lennox, you said earlier, though, when you see a fighter cut that early, you just get a little more pump pumped. Yeah, I mean, you know, I work on it. It gives me something to go for. I love to see blood on my opponent. It's like a target. Yeah. I love to see blood on my opponent. Hall of Famer Lennox. That, was, that means I'm doing something right. <laughs> and you've been doing it in the second round even better. Yeah. Because you said in the first round you didn't like the way Gomez came out. No, I didn't. And in the second round, he cuts him. If you, were, if you were him, you would just attack that eye right now? I would throw combinations and definitely work on that eye. Uh, throw even more right hands, throw some hooks. But mainly, I realize that the fact that he's, he's bleeding easy, and he, that means he cuts, cuts easy, just, I just need to punch him a little bit more so he cuts even more. Lennox wins some battles over the years, does cut Lennox. Give him up, give him up. Gomez looking very confident, controlling. Hey, 
He's outmaneuvering Herrera right now, getting in when he wants. He's not catching that jab. Herrera's not really working his jab anymore. And when he's attacking him, he's attacking him at angles. Frankie Gomez served as a sparring partner for Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Working out, right. out of the wild card right. with Ray Rose. Right. Right. After his last fight against Ivorio Ortiz, he was supposed to go to the Philippines and serve as a sparring partner for Pacquiao. He got ready for Tim Bradley. Unable to do it because he got the call to, hey, you're going to have this fight. So you prepare for this one. One of the problems with him is in the past has been making weight that he had to cut off some excess fat in friends, Lennox. People that were just bad influences around him. It's all that yeah. <laughs> well, the, 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 the pan dulce, the, the Mexican team, especially in East LA. Body shot from Herrera. Body work from Herrera would be um, very wise. Because I think Gomez can take a shot. I think he's got a pretty good chin. Watch your head, watch your head. And when he was younger, I saw uh, more experienced fighters hurt him to the body. Maybe he's susceptible there. He's not staying around trying to get any body shots right now. So he's, he's doing a good thing by moving around. Storing, showing different angles. This is what you need to do. Not making himself an easy target. Yeah, he's showing some um, some, some good Work footwork out. and Watch. lateral movement. And you know what? He was a really good amateur. He was a U.S. national champion, and he got a silver medal in the World Amateur Championships. Done! At the brand new T-Mobile Arena, Canelo Khan, the second fight of the night. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and Hall of Famer. Lennox Lewis joining it in tonight. Thanks for being here. You're watching Mauricio Herrera and Frankie Gomez. And Doug, how do you have that? Um, I have it three rounds to one in favor of young Frankie Gomez. I scored the first round for Herrera. Basically, based on his jab, but let since then, he's been the power punching and the ring general shit Frankie Gomez. Lennox, how do you see it? I, I look at the same way. Uh, Gomez really settled out now, and he's throwing some good punches. Go he figured out the and he's throwing the right kind of punches to really get to him. And he's throwing, you know, punches and bunches. This is what you need to do with combination punches. And now he's kind of stepped it up a bit. He's throwing a lot more punches. Punch out there, come on. Herrera is standing there Work out. asking him to throw right. punches. When a fighter does that, Lennox, what are they doing? He's playing mind games. He's trying to sucker him in so he can land the big punch. But you know, uh, Gomez is no fool. He knows what he's doing. Aren't he's you giving away a round by doing that also? He is. He's giving away a round. He's, he's risking it all just for one punch. He's waiting for him, Gomez to come in so he can throw that one punch to try and hurt him. I don't think he has that one punch. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. Only seven knockouts and 22 victories. He's never been known for his power. Some guys like to, you know, feel shots and take shots, and he's definitely one of them. Usually when you get hit, you want to you return the favor, but he's not returning the favor that much. He's just really walking him down and not really doing too much, waiting for those perfect spots so he can really explode with some combinations. Trained by Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach speaks very that highly that of that 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 Frankie Gomez. And if you can keep him in the gym, keep him out of the streets from his friends and the bad influences, and just get him to commit to boxing every single day, he sees he see something special in Frankie Gomez. Gomez, recently, he had to finally change his diet, realizing he's getting older. He can't eat the way he wants to. It has to be a year round. Look on now. Look on. Sure work out. Work out. Your weight, even when you're not fighting. And Frankie Gomez. He's gonna have to be in shape because actually Herrera came on pretty strong in the second half of this this round. First fight of the night was an upset. Curtis Stevens with a second round KO of Patrick Teixeira here. Frankie 
Gomez looks like he's controlling this fight. But if he, even though he's undefeated, would it be an upset? Or yeah, I, this I, I looked at this fight more as an even money fight because it is that sort of uh, quintessential crossroads match. You know what I mean? You got a guy on his way up against a, a, a veteran who, whose career may have um, stagnated over the past year or two. I looked at it as a must win for both guys. Especially for Herrera. Oh, work out, work out. Where Let go in there. 22 and 5 in his career, the 35 year old. Frankie Gomez continuing to do what he's been doing since the second round. Bringing the pressure against Herrera. I think Herrera has to stop that pressure. I think he needs to be the guy who comes forward. He's not able to box Gomez from a distance. He doesn't do well at all when he goes against the ropes. He, he looked pretty decent in the final minute of the previous round when he was coming forward and, and working the young man's body. I think that, that's how he has to fight the entire fight. Lennox, what do you think of Frankie Gomez right. so far? I think he's doing the right things. He's, you know, he's comfortable now. He's, he's uh, moving around the ring when he wants to. Uh, Put Herrera against the ropes, he can. And I think he likes when Herrera comes at him because he can do what he wants. Good left landed by Herrera. Did you, you see the flash of what Freddie Roach talks about? Of how right. he thinks he can be something special? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, get this guy serious in the gym. I mean, I love what he's doing right now. You know, he's basically moving. You know, he's, he's giving different angles. He's throwing some good combinations. Oh, They're not one punches. There are you know, three there, punch combinations, four punch combinations, mixing up from head to head and body. So this, this is good boxing. This is what he needs to do. Doug, in this division, we're talking earlier the welterweight division. Some of the names that stand out. It was not that loaded of, of a division, right? Are you talking about 140 pounds or 147? Well, that's right, because Herrera, Frankie's, yeah, Frankie's kind of a, an in between. You know, he and, and his team says he can make junior welterweight. Work this fight is a welterweight fight. Of course, he's missed weight a couple times when it was set at, uh, you know, even close to, to junior welterweight. Yeah. But both, you know, both divisions, they have talent at the top, but when you get down to, like, the number seven, number eight contender, they're, Coming in, not, right. they're not that talented, and they're not that accomplished either, so absolutely, um, Gomez can be a player in either division. Final second of the sixth round, let's get it for 10. Gomez and Herrera, two Mexican-Americans going at it on Cinco de Mayo weekend in ah. Los Seventh round, the pit bull is Gomez from East L.A. In that wild card gym in Hollywood, you see some of the better names come through there. But Gomez picking up some veteran tactics, buddy. Oh, no, yeah. no he, he can do the rough stuff. <laughs> Manny, Manny Pacquiao's a nice guy outside of the <laughs> ring, but he can be a mean sucker in there in the ring. Sparring with Pacquiao, the future first ballot Hall of Famer. That's that's amazing experience for a 24-year-old. Bethel Grant, Doug Fisher, Hall of Famer, Lennox Lewis. Lennox, what do you see in Herrera right now? You know, Herrera looks like he's still trying to figure out Gomez. You know, he's trying to get him against the sucker and then. But I don't think he's doing that much damage. Work out of there. Um, you know, I think he, he needs more direction from his corner. Um, he just looks like a sparring partner in there right now. He's not really doing anything to, uh, that I can say, oh, great punch, great right hand, and great hook. He's just content with just staying in there close and, you know, picking his punches and throwing little combinations here and there. Like he's giving work to Gomez, which is benefiting Gomez in his career, but is he doing anything to really get himself in the fight? Work out. Not really. I mean, he doesn't seem like he wants to win this fight. He's just, nah. He just, just seems up. like a, a, a sparring partner to me right now. Now, I have Herrera losing every round since the opening Break. round. Yeah, and that was the round that Lennox said Herrera really, that Gomez really wasn't warmed up. He's warm now, controlling this fight is Frankie Gomez from East L.A. And I'm really impressed with his poise. I mean, he doesn't look like he's caught up in the yeah. moment at all. This is a huge stage for a young man. He just seems so comfortable in there. Yeah, nothing really Let's seems to face him. Watch that head. It's Gomez, lands the left. Now a nice mouse underneath the right eye of Mauricio Herrera. Cut underneath the left, the right eye starting to swell. See those punches landing by Gomez, taking their toll here in the seventh round. Body shot. Doing the 
doing this in front of the promoter Oscar DeLoya and Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> yeah, he is, oh, he is out, out, outclassing and punishing a veteran fighter who most folks believe beat Danny Garcia, who is still undefeated. You know, a title holder in two, two weight classes. Some people look at Garcia as sort of an elite pound for pound level fighter. And, and Herrera gave him fifth. Okay, what do you think Herrera Frank. won? Lost or it was a draw. Herrera head. gave Danny Garcia hell. <laughs> Frankie Gomez is in here just working him over. Look, where's that guy at right now? <laughs> well, he's got a different, he's got a, a different puzzle in front of him. I, I, I don't think Danny Garcia is as tricky as for this version of Frankie Gomez. I've heard of Frankie Gomez for a while. A lot of hype around him, and it's. This is the guy that a lot of people expected to happen a couple years ago, right, Doug? Yeah, and maybe our expectations were a little bit too much. There are special fighters like Oscar De La Hoya or Amir Khan in our main event tonight who, you know, they're elite amateurs uh, as teenagers and they can turn pro as a teenager and live up to those expectations. I think it might have been better for Frankie Gomez if he would have uh, stayed an amateur and tried to make the 2012 Olympic squad because I just think he needed that extra time to mature before he became a professional and had all this money thrown at him. I just don't think I, I just think it was an immaturity thing with him. He was a knucklehead when he was 18, 19, 20 years old. People start latching on to you that you don't want to be around. You think you turned pro at 19? When did you feel like as a pro you had things down? It took a couple years. Got, it took out. a little bit of experience. And, you know, even with Gomez, you could say, you know, we mature at different times. All boxers mature at different times. And, you know, he took a long time to mature. If you look at my career, I took a long time to mature. Mike Tyson didn't take a long time to mature. He matured, he matured fast. So uh, each boxer has their time that they mature. And, you know, life kind of comes down on them and they kind of get serious. And, you know, now he's serious. You can tell. You can tell. And in this day and age of social media where every single moment of your life is now captured, especially if you're an amateur coming through, where everybody knows everything about you, that's got to be a different factor too, right, Lennox? It is a different factor. I mean, when, you know, when you go out, you know, people know you. You don't know them because, you know, you've been in the paper. A report is written go, about you. Out. And go. they've basically told your life story. So when you walk on the street, a lot of people want to get to know you. And sometimes some bad people want to get to know you. A minute to go in the eighth round. Can you imagine if Twitter and social media was around Mike Tyson? <laughs> was 18, 19, 20 years old? <laughs> A lot of, you can say that about a lot of sports. That's true. Yeah, 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 that's true. This day and age, you got to be just careful. Break. Let's go. Let's go. You have to be responsible. And that's something Frankie Gomez was for a long time. And it seems like he's finally got his act together outside of the ring, which is um, enabling us to see him at the <laughs> <laughs> incident. Gomez has a young daughter, Alice. Kids always do that. Help me. Final seconds of the eighth round. Gomez and Herrera. That is Canelo Khan. It was crazy. Everybody wants, you know, when you're the last undisputed. Everybody wants to talk to me. Exactly. That's why we're here. Watching Mauricio Herrera, Frankie Gomez, Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and... The Hall of Famer, Lennox Lewis. This is Doug. Do I ask how your scorecard is looking right now? Yeah, you don't have to. Herrera won round one. It's been all Frankie Gomez since then. I thought he had an excellent round eight. A beautiful mix of offense, defense, and ring general shape. Great power punch combinations. Really good footwork. Good head and up with body movement. He's, I mean, he's a difficult target. I mean, look at his face. There's not a mark on this kid's face. And, and Beto, we've seen him in against guys who are not near the level of Mauricio Herrera. Mark up Frankie Gomez. Yeah, yeah, and, and, but, and he must have taken this fight seriously. And, and you know, sometimes you got to give these young guys a reason to train hard. If you put them in there with the guy that they know they're going to beat, 
they may only train at like 70, 75 percent. You've seen that, Lennox? Where do you, well, obviously for a world heavyweight fight, it's different, right? Yeah, you know, well, you got to take every fight serious, especially, you know, when you're a champion. But when you're not the champion, you know, you got to be in good shape all the time, ready for that phone call. Somebody make that phone call and say, are you ready to fight? You, you know, we got a world championship fight ready. Are you ready? So you have to always make sure that you're ready, training all the time. Kind of frustrate you the way that you train and you set yourself up and you see other kids who have the talent and potential and it's like they don't take it as serious as they should no uh you right. know a lot of these boxers nowadays they don't really even go to camp the old time fighters used to go to camp spend six months in camp four months in camp when they came out they were a beast where would you go Pocono. poconos poconos <laughs> i've never lost coming off the hill <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say Poconos. Every time as a little kid, I always hear you say Poconos. I'm like, where is that? There was no Google. I had to go to the library <laughs> to find out where Poconos were at. And once I found out, like, oh, they, there's something about that area. I gotta go one day. Oh, go. Come out like a champ, huh? Yes, that's where the champs train. How'd you end up? Uh, you know, it was actually Manuel Stewart, the late Manuel Stewart really said that was a good camp up there and that I should go up there and he knows the guy up there. And when I went up there, it was great. Right on the lake. Great, uh, great for working out, great for uh, sparring. It's like the East Coast version of Big Bear Lake. Yeah. Yes. Good one, two for Frankie Gomez. Mauricio Herrera, fed underneath the left eye in the second. Now from the right eye in the last couple rounds. Frankie Gomez, the controlling this fight. Seeing a lot of lateral movement from Frankie now. I mean, he knows he's got the lead. Body work from Frankie. Final seconds of the ninth round. It's scheduled for 10. Did you ever really listen to him? No. You know the rules, right? Yeah, we know, we know the rules. Even when we break him. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Canelo Alvarez has 48 professional fights. Yeah. This ain't his first rodeo. <laughs> Tenth and final round with Frankie Gomez in the green, white, and red. Mauricio Herrera. Really heavy. That's great, great, great. This is scorecard. This is blue. This is a nice fluid footwork from Frankie Gomez. The hand speed is still there here in the tenth and final round. Come on, come on, work out, work out. Twenty and O. Oh. Herrera is still grinding, still trying to get some work done. Not able to get any kind of momentum going he's, all he's, night. He's just receiving punches and saying thank you, and then walking and saying, hit me, hit me some more. If you say the figure out, sparring. Yeah. I can see him throw one big punch to say, I want to knock this guy out. I don't know if he has that power. Or at least try to throw that big punch. Yeah, it's been arm punches in close, but there's been nothing really clean landed on from the outside, but. Part of the reason is the, elus the elusiveness of the head. Frankie up. Gomez. Seeing head of the body Get movement. Head. Get that head up. Lateral Go. movement. Fight. Keeps his body at one angle or another. <laughs> switching stances. Not an easy target. Not, not an easy uh, style to figure out. If Gomez stays <laughs> this way, Doug, what, where does he go? Uh, you know what? I, I think... Time. The corner. Mauricio Herrera is a top 10 contender at junior welterweight. This is at, at welterweight. <laughs> <laughs> Gomez decides to stay. We need this uh, cut off. Adam here, 147 we need to cut off or take over. I think they need to target uh, uh, a real top 10 or top 15 contender from the welterweight division. That's the next step. That's the next logical step. If they want to be. If they want to go for a title Good. at 147. They got to be the I'm top in. 10 or 15 Fuck. contender who is a real welterweight. And if he goes down. Um, uh, a, a, a high level contender. Uh, you know, because Herrera is a, a top 10 contender. Try to get somebody in the top five. Angle for a, a title oh elimination battle. Interesting to see how Golden Boy takes him in the next few months. Frank and Gilman. Golden Boy, look good doing it. Roughed up the pace of Mauricio Herrera. No good mix on the pace at all. Frank and Gilman. This is by work far out. the finest performance of Frankie work Gomez's out. professional Let's career. Go in there. Frankie's not going to come in with that chiseled body for you. He's not going to be inside a body building contest. Comes in, does the work. Had no trouble making this weight. Frank! 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 
Stop! I say break. I think he showed a lot of people who just thought that he was a, a, a mauler, an aggressive sluggish, a little bit of technique. And, and he showed in this fight that he's a boxer with a lot of skill. Boy, Roach is part of the equation. Ladies and gentlemen, after Jeff 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the potential. judges' scorecards, and all three have it 100 to 90. Your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Frankie Pitbull.